So you're looking to buy a new monitor, but you're not sure whether to go for a super sharp 4K one like this, or maybe a immersive ultra wide like this. Well, I've got two of the latest LG monitors here on my desk. I've actually reviewed both of these individually. You can check them out by clicking on the card at the top right, but 4K or ultra wide, which is best? Which should you go for and which one am I using every day? If you're looking for a monitor to do work on and maybe play some games, ultrawides may be a good bet. They don't have the raw pixel density of 4K, but they do have a size advantage, width. The extra wide desktop means you can comfortably use three apps or three Chrome tabs side by side particularly if you go for a bigger one like this. That's 38 inches diagonally, although you can get them in 25, 29, 34, and 38, with 29 and 34 inches being the most common. So not everyone's gonna want one this big, but that extra screen real estate on the side versus this, well, you can just see you're getting a lot more on the screen. And it's a great alternative to, say, a dual monitor setup, as you've got no ugly bezels in the middle. Gaming on an ultra wide is incredible. You get a wider field of view, making games feel more cinematic, and it really draws you in, especially if you've got a curved ultra wide like this. There is a downside, and that's the resolution. These, even the bigger ones, usually max out at 3440 by 1440, whereas this is a 3840 by 2160 resolution. So if you want the absolute most sharp, crispest, highest resolution possible, you're gonna have to go 4K. 4K monitors range from 24 all the way up to 40 inches. This one is 27 inches, but personally, I think 32 inches is the sweet spot and the best size for 4K. You're getting a resolution that is four times higher than standard Full HD 1080p. So photos, 4K video, and games all look clearer and more detailed. And those tiny pixels means text and content will appear smaller on a 4K compared to a lower resolution screen, potentially giving you a boost in usable desktop space. But in reality, you'll probably want to scale what's on screen back up to a more usable size, meaning you're not really getting that much extra space anyway. Games look incredible in 4K as well. Textures look finer, and you don't need to use as much anti-aliasing. So you may be able to lower that option in the settings, but there is a serious performance overhead that comes with playing in 4K. Pushing all those pixels means you'll need a high-end graphics card to get anything like playable frame rates. Seriously, if you're gonna be playing the latest games at 4K with high settings and you want a stable 60 FPS, probably gonna need a 1080 Ti graphics card. Or maybe it's worth waiting for the next generation of cards like the 1180 or whatever they're gonna be called. You can of course always drop the resolution when playing games, but then you're missing out on what you've paid for and it can look a little fuzzy. So 4K gaming is great if you have a super powerful PC that can push all the extra pixels but still get a smooth frame rate. Now, ultrawides tend to use a widened Full HD or Quad HD resolution. So while the vertical resolution stays the same, you're getting about 25% additional horizontal pixels. But there's something else to consider aside from just the resolution, and that is, of course, the aspect ratio. That's the most obvious difference here. This is 21 by nine, this is 16 by nine. But when it comes to actually using your computer and watching videos on YouTube and playing games, it makes a big difference. 4K uses the same 16 by nine screen ratio as almost all video content out there. When you play it on a 21 by nine ultra wide like this, it means you're gonna get vertical black bars on either side of the image or the video, pillar boxing essentially. Native 21 by nine video looks fantastic, almost cinema-like, but the problem is that most movies and TV don't tend to support the format. So video is pretty thin on the ground, although you can find some examples on YouTube. Games mostly aren't a problem though, as newer titles generally do support the 21x9 aspect, and they scale correctly to the edges, extending your peripheral vision, which is a real advantage in FPS and racing games. Most ultrawides also come with a curved screen, ranging from a gentle arc to a more severe radius that gives you a subtle wraparound experience. The reason for the curve is that you get less distortion in the corners and better viewing angles than if it were flat. But one benefit of these being slightly lower resolution versus 4K is that we can get some ultra wide models with a higher than 60 Hertz refresh rate, anything from 75 all the way up to 200 Hertz, which makes everything, including games, feel so much smoother. Assuming, of course, you have a high enough frame rate to take advantage of it. Right now, there aren't really any high refresh rate 4K monitors on the market, but towards the end of 2018, we've got the likes of the ASUS ROG Swift PG27UQ and Acer Predator X27, both of which are 4K and 144Hz. 
but they're only 27 inches in size and they will cost close to $2,000. Both these LG monitors I've got here support high dynamic range, although I would say that neither are proper HDR as brightness maxes out at around 400 nits and they're not using true 10-bit panels, but it can make games look a little bit more vibrant and contrasty. Both of these also support AMD's FreeSync technology, so if you have an AMD graphics card, it'll help you reduce screen tearing, stuttering, and make your frame rate more stable in games. But if you have an NVIDIA graphics card like most people do, then you're probably going to want to find a monitor with G-Sync, although that usually adds one to 200 pounds to the price. So let's sum up, which should you buy? Well, in my opinion, as someone who uses their monitor for everything, from work to playing games, I'm gonna go ultra wide. I love a good ultra wide. Let me just show you that as someone who uses Premiere Pro every day, this is what a timeline can look like on a 38 inch ultra wide monitor like this. Now, if I bring this over to the 16 by nine, I mean, it's great and it's sharper because it's 4K, but everything just feels a little closed off, a little restricted coming from this. I think if you have never used an ultra wide, that's absolutely fine. You won't really know the difference, but I really do struggle, I have to say, going back to a 16x9, even if it is 4K, uh, coming from something like this. So for me, I'm going to be sticking with an ultra wide. But having said all that, the point actually may be moot because very, very few people actually use these types of monitors. In the most recent Steam hardware survey, about 1.5% of Steam users were playing at an ultra-wide resolution. Even fewer people were gaming at 4K, about 1.2%. So combined, it's a tiny, tiny portion. The vast majority of people are still gaming at full HD on a traditional 16x9 monitor, which is fine. But if you do want to upgrade, if you want something a little bit different, then I would definitely recommend checking out either of these options, whether you want the super sharp resolution, that clarity of 4K, or the extra screen real estate, that immersive effect you get with an ultra wide. But what do you think? Are they just a waste of money when good quality full HD panels are a lot cheaper? And would you go 4K or ultra wide? Vote in the poll at the top right and let me know what you think in the comments below. A big thanks to LG for providing me with these two awesome monitors and I've put links to my recommended 4K and ultra wide monitors in the description below if you want to check those out. Don't forget to click like and subscribe if you enjoyed this video and you want to see more monitor videos from me and me attempting to say monitor and then comments coming in saying you're saying monitor and why you're saying it like that and telling me off because that's always fun but I'm doing my best. And so, so yeah, subscribe if you want to see more of that. Thank you very much for watching guys. I'll see you next time right here on the Tech Chat.